Do you get it? Yeah. What is it? A tomb? A hose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boats and hose. <laughs> Good morning. It might not be morning where you're watching, but welcome to episode three of my mountain bike van build. And today we're gonna be spraying foam on the inside. Obviously, I'm not the expert is. Let's go and check out what we're gonna do. This and then this too. Now you just sort of leave it out. After Alan goes through where he needs the foam to be, the process begins. It's worth noting that this stuff can and will get everywhere. The sprayer even told us he's heard of it getting onto some cars 10 kilometers away from where it's sprayed. So I popped on a mask and started to film. The process can take about half a day to complete, maybe even a few hours, but the van then needs to stay in a dry spot for a couple of days to allow the foam to settle and cure. You can buy or rent kits to do it yourself, but after looking at the costs of hiring a company to do it, it's basically the same. So why not get someone that knows precisely how to do it and can do it a lot faster with fewer problems? Now, why do Van Gogh conversions choose to do spray foaming? Well, because it's bonded directly to the metal shell of the van, no moisture can form in between and then it becomes its own vapour barrier. It also provides more effective sound deadening as well, as it's adhered to the outside panels. And of course, there's no nook or crannies being missed as it can get in everywhere and improves the efficiency of the heater inside, for example. This process probably takes less time than doing the insulation board thing, but of course, there's more prep time and planning when it comes into getting the things like the electronics right, but it does seem worth it in the end. Okay, it's been a couple of days. The spray foaming has been done. It was going to take ages, so I left partway through. Alan is going to give me the reveal of how it looked. Oh, that's so weird. That's so cool. Wait, I'll show you. Check it out. It's literally everywhere. Out of 10, how sure are you of the wiring now? Yeah, there's no going better, back. Better be sure. Feel this compared to this. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty obvious. With the spray foam all in, it's time to cut the sheeting for the van walls, floor and ceiling. This is where having experts like Van Gogh make life a lot easier. Alan will go around the van, cutting off the extra bits of foam, ready for a smooth install of the floor. Comes Will. Going in. This must be why nobody does spray foam. <laughs> this must be why no one does it. <laughs> yeah, this is a porch. Better? Oh! Second try Tuesday. Let's come back to more. It's Monday, Will. What the? It's time for some more holes to go in the van. Easily the scariest part of the build, but Alan hasn't messed up so far, so I trust him. So what are we putting in, Alan? The gravity fill, Boop. city fill. And what's the difference? Wait, let me explain. I've 100% perfected it. Okay. This is to pour water in and fill my water tank. Yes. This one, the city fill, is for if I'm at an RV place or a campsite Close. and I can plug into mains water so I don't have to use any of the water in my thing or my yep. pump. This bypasses the holding tank and the pump so because it'll be pressurized. And that's, I can, if I'm at someone's house and somehow they have external power, yeah. Most yeah, that works. Do. Most houses do. I can be at an RV park yeah. and plug directly in so I don't have to use anything. This will charge your batteries too. It's another way. So a solar alternator from the car and then this as well. Oh, beautiful. The holes are in, and today it's time to start doing all the siding and the ceiling as well. The floor is looking pretty nice. Now we just have to figure out how to enclose all of this stuff. Alan gets to work cutting out the final side sheets of the van and then tacks them in place to make sure we've got the correct sizing. So my job right now 
is choosing from this sample. So this is for mica, and this is what we're gonna cover the walls with. So we're not gonna paint it. Alan's super keen to get involved with, with this stuff. So basically kind of sheet it on. He's pretty stoked with the finish. The only problem is that there's like all these colors here, and I gotta pick one. This is gonna take a while. I, I get all the hard jobs, I get all the hard jobs. What is the difference? Dover white, neutral white, mission white. We're going with... White. White. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's more. There's more stuff, isn't there? Just uh, these are a couple of options I haven't made. I'm gonna make little sample like blocks on this, but say you wanted to go with the walnut for your cabinets, they can get different stain. This is real wood. You can stain it darker or you can just... Yeah, look at that. Black and white, we can do like a really dark... You'll have the really dark ceiling and really dark countertop maybe. Are we doing dark countertop? We don't have to, but... I like the kind of bamboo-y finish. Oh, like what we did before? Yeah. Okay. The water pump and the furnace have arrived. So, what? Oh, the pump's been here for ages. <laughs> Other stuff has arrived then. Other stuff has arrived. We've got the water heater, the furnace. Oh. Cool. That's so exciting. This is everything I've ever dreamt of. This is the most incredible tankless water heater I've ever seen, Alan. Yeah, me too. I can't believe it. Whoa, hot. And cold? Where do they end? And gas. Whoa! And electrical, it's better. Jeez, I can't believe oh. it. Be roughly like this. Yeah. If there's one thing I've learned about being nomadic, it's, I think this is going to be pretty <laughs> useful at times. I reckon we have, because if we have a bench over the top, you see, that's what I was thinking. And then this slides out. That would look pretty steezy. Is it better to have it the other way and have the, the bench lift up and have that underneath? I like this idea. Yeah, I think that's a winner, it'll isn't it? slide out, and then you got all your leg room here. And then if you're feeling bold, you can poo with a view. Poo with a view, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down here, because then feet should rest perfectly on top for the old workspace. Yeah, you just need a lot of clearance around these. And then the other thing is it has to work on the outside of the panel, too. Like on the actual band. Oh yeah, you yeah. come through a stupid, like a weird spot. But that should work right there, it's just a big panel. Now that we have all the appliances, it's time to figure out where they go. After finalizing the puzzling of where things should go, the plan started to look a lot like this. These appliances would all be boxed in in a cabinet, and then there's a desk next to the driver's seat with a second monitor for the best working ever mounted to the wall. Above this, I'll have a row of storage cabinets going all the way to the back of the van, with the garage separated from the main living area with this divider. The kitchen will have a two burner stove top on the left and then the sink next to it with some counter space to the right of that. With all this realized, the work can continue and after painting the ceiling black, Alan installs it. If you've seen the last video, you'll know we're going to be installing wooden planks along the top, so Alan uses the chalk line here to mark where they should go. This will help cover up any of the joins and make the look real homely. If you didn't catch that episode, then hit subscribe and go back and watch it. Brad had a few more wires to fit in, so with a bit of scraping off the foam, he got to finishing his job.
Well, as you can see, it's 25 past eight at night. I've been home and had a nice dinner, sat by the fire. <laughs> These guys are Van Gogh conversions in Squamish. <laughs> Link in the description below. They're still here, working hard. All the paneling is now officially in. All the power outlets have been brought through. We've got this panel going on with the matrix coming out of these three holes. Can I just hold that? Hey, not a problem. Oh wait, that needs to go over a bit. Yeah, push it this way. This is the best way of holding plywood against the wall. <laughs> I've been practicing. Still on it. <laughs> Such a crucial member of this team. There were some final touches to how the furnace was to be arranged, but with all this done, Alan cuts in the final holes into the van. It's all gone according to plan. Time to start constructing the rear garage, and that starts with getting the divider in place and cut to shape. The crew make a template and then begin the fine detail of getting the size of the panel just right. Something that's not straightforward and takes a couple of goes to get perfect. And done. Just the dog is coming. Just just What do you reckon, Brad? Has he done it first time? No. Sorry, second try. Sorry, second try. What's he missing? Two or three inches. <laughs> <laughs> so here we'll kick yours over. Out. To me. Okay. To you. Oh, damn, I'm in Canada. Another joke that no one would get. For the 50. So this is what we're gonna do. This is in semi-temporarily. When we get the height, this will be cut to the height of the mattress, drop down to the bottom of the mattress and back up so you have a space to get in your bed easier. Ryan, who is the certified gas expert here, comes over to finish connecting up the propane tank to standard. While he's doing this, we can check out Alan's plumbing work as he's already connected the water tank and run hoses that are going to go all the way to the tankless water heater. The pump we're using doesn't need an extra accumulator, which was a pretty good thing to discover. You'll also notice that the Formica has started to be applied. I'll show you how they do this towards the end of the video. He's also installed a valve underneath the van that easily allows the tank to be drained. Brad's electrical box has been built and he begins to wiring in this work of art. More on that in the next episode. Alan is building a door to make it easier to access the water pump at the back, but also we're going to be making a channel that connects the furnace into the rear garage. The reason for this is so that we can equalize the temperature of the front and the rear so that we avoid condensation forming. And that's what this vent is going to do. This will be heat one day. Whoa! It's a tight fit. To protect the floor of the garage, this thick black material is cut and glued in. This should make it easy to clean as well. With the van destined for mountain bike trips, it's all about making things as easy as possible. It's a big day today. Hopefully this episode three is gonna get wrapped up because we've got lots of goals. But something very exciting that Brad wants to show me is my shower. Okay, we got you a quick disconnect shower. So this, it's quick disconnect. This will mount in here. Right. Obviously we have to finish for making that. Yeah. Mount in there. There you yeah. go. Shower, clean up your bikes, everything you need, and then you can disconnect it, put it in your drawer that's in here. Is this, this is hot and cold? Hot and cold, yeah. Oh, that's, there's the game changer. Just like You wanna start in the middle? Yeah. You want me to grab two? Uh, and there's a team effort coming in. How'd this get dust on? What's with the tubes? Oh, you'll see. It won't stick to the tubes. Oh. If it touches anywhere, it's like, it's on there for good. Yeah, you got it? Yep. Okay. Oh, that's genius.
And that's episode three. Next episode, I'll be showing you how we built some awesome bike sliding trays for the garage and even putting a window on the side door. Hit subscribe so you don't miss it. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And most importantly, watch it twice. Cheers, punters. I'll see you next time.